We set off quite bleary eyed at 5am this morning and we met uh, Wayne from the Fenland Wildfowlers. There you go. I was slightly nervous because Wayne had his proper waders and things like that and I, did, I don't have all the kit. We also had to carry quite a lot of equipment out there because we had to take the hide, the decoy, cartridges, something to carry the birds back in, that sort of thing. You okay? Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. Let's go then. Brilliant. And we set off across the marsh um, in the pitch black and Wayne doesn't use a head torch. I was saying to him, why don't you use one? He said, oh, I've just got really good night vision. And, and we were just going down a, a, a black, into a black marsh. It was a bit of a, a hard walk out there, actually. We, weren't, we went quite far, you know. I mean, um, Wayne knows the marsh quite well, but he was very determined to get to this point where he said was, um, there'd be a lot of activity. just arrived in our hide and uh, I thought the wild fowling, I've read all this wild fowling literature and I thought it would be mist and ice and quite sort of romantic but actually it's just a lot of mud. I got literally stuck in the mud. I couldn't move. Wayne, who I've only just met, had to, had to hoik me out of a few creeks and gullies so we're quite know each other quite well now <laughs> um, but we're here now and um, the ducks are flighting and we've seen widgeon and teal as well here. Good boy. writing the ethical carnivore has been an e extraordinary experience i set out to spend a year only eating what i killed myself actually ended up being two years um, and a lot of that was because it takes a long time to build up the skills. Shotgun shooting especially, I had to put a lot of time and work into it. And I always thought wildfowling sounded interesting because I knew of some amazing conservationists like Peter Scott who were great wildfowlers and um, it struck me as an interesting way to get your own meat because it's such a challenge but also it's quite close to nature it's compared to a lot of things we do in Britain for meat it's closer to nature so I always felt like in my book it was one of the things I most wanted to do because I felt like it was almost the most pure um, but I also knew it was quite it's quite a difficult thing to do so I didn't manage to do it in the book so <laughs> so um, I took the opportunity to do it now because I've because I'm carrying on learning about the countryside. Can you hear the pinkies? We can hear the pink-footed geese, um, kind of high-pitched, wink, 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 and uh, um, coming in over the marsh. It's really nice to hear them. It's a beautiful sound. I knew it was difficult and it would be difficult for me because I'm not an experienced shot but I was surprised by all the other wildfowlers out today didn't get anything. One of them said to me he's been out 20 times this season, 20 times getting up at five o'clock in the morning and he didn't get anything and I kind of thought well that's that's a noble pursuit. You know, he's really earning his dinner. <laughs> well, I guess it was very quick. Wayne had gone off to retrieve a bird and, um, and I saw some ducks coming over and I really, and I thought, I thought those, I was pretty sure they were widgeon. And I wanted to check so I looked out and I saw Wayne ducking so I thought okay. 
I didn't really think about it, you know, I sort of went to automatic um, actions and I could, you know, I was really looking at the bird and that's the secret to aiming and doing it well. And suddenly this bird fell down out of the sky like a stone, like right in front of the hide. And Wayne shouted off in the distance, good shot. And I was really surprised in shock that I could get a good shot. But also suddenly there's this moment and you have killed a bird and you have to process that. Uh, so I've got, I just got my first widgeon. Boomer, Boomer, you're going to bring it to me? Boomer, come on. Um, Bring it, good boy. Boomer, come on, boy. Come on. Sorry, there's a bird coming. But it was a really good shot. They got him. Stone dead. Which is what I want. More in front. Are you all the all pen? Yeah, you've got the only pretty bird of the day. <laughs> oh. Oh. Oops. I've shot birds before. I I've been so. pheasant shooting, actually, and pigeon shooting. Um, and even though this is much harder work, I'd say I enjoy yeah. it more because I think I earned it more. And um, you have to go to the birds. It also forces you to become part of nature. You know, you have to hide, you have to go with the tides, with the timing, with the weather. Uh, you have to be alert and quiet and you have to get it right. So I think I'd say I prefer it. And it forces you to be out in the morning when no one else is there. And that's an amazing experience, actually. You see a lot of other wildlife. I mean, a curlew flew past the hide really close. It was beautiful. So, you know, I've seen a lot of other wildlife this morning, which is lovely. I'm passionate about where food comes from because I think when people don't know, we're on quite a dangerous path. What we've seen from the horse meat scandal when what happens when the supply chain's too long and people don't understand what their eat, what their meat is or where it's coming from. And I think it's it's good for us, not just for our health, because we know where something comes from, and for the environment, because we can make sure it's not damaging the environment that we care about, but for us psychologically, because we eat animals but we care about where the animals are from, so I think we have to face up to how they reach our plate. And I think that can be a positive story. I think if you bash people with frightening facts about factory farming and killing, then they're going to turn away. But you can also give them lots of positive stories, like wildfowling, where people um, are, are harvesting uh, meat from the land in a sustainable way. I think it's a way to connect to your food. And food is how you connect to nature, how you connect to the environment. It's a very human thing.